All right, holy shit. Um, <laughs> okay, we got we got a lot to talk about. I'm gonna burn through the first little bit of this uh, roadmap because uh, let's be honest, I think 90% of us can agree most of these changes completely fine. And then we're gonna talk about you, buddy. We're gonna we're gonna talk about you right here at the end. Okay, okay. Uh, let's get started. Well, more part two, electric boogaloo, whatever. Herbal activity. Everyone likes a pre-pod device. Fine, it's another mini game. Doesn't affect me. I don't give a shit. Group boss is kind of meh for me as well. Whatever. Glad to see some actual content that requires teammates though. Uh, I've said it in previous videos. I think Cobb is really the only content in the game right now where it's like, yeah, you need someone to you need someone to fucking tell you where that maze is going, um, or else you're kind of you're kind of fucked, right? Or you better have someone DPSing those nylos for you, or else you're fucked as well. Um, and only really the upper echelon of people can do that group content by themselves. I think that's really neat. Um, I would like to see more group content in the future, given this is an MMO. Uh, granted, we 90% of the content in the MMO, we do single player. There's even a dedicated single, single player mode for this fucking game, but I digress. Um, more quests. Wow, no surprise there. Don't really, no, don't really care. Low intensity agility method was mentioned. That's kind of neat. I'm curious how low intensity it is and what the rates are, but time will tell. Um, that's all good and well. Curse of Arav. I never played the OG Majorat quest lines. I played back during their time, but I uh, was too much of a shitter to get that far. So, no real opinion there. I would like to. I, I you know, I guess I, I, I can't really speak on this. I don't really care too much because, like I said, I was never there for the original, but, um, you know, OSRS is its own game. It'd be kind of neat to see its own lore and own stories and kind of its own creative content, of course, um, going its own direction. But uh, as they said, you know, they have a planned twist here at the end or a plan, a plan to divert and go its own route anyway. So maybe time will tell, whatever. Rathma, um, I don't PK. I have never PK'd before. I have a lot of respect for PKers, which I know is kind of a, a weird thing to say. A lot of you just uh, fucking curled your toes and recoiled in disgust when I said that. But no, I do have a lot of respect for the PKers, and I think that they get shafted a lot by the community. I think the concept of, you killed me and took my stuff, and that hurts my feelings, um, really gets under the, a lot of people's skin, and it kind of puts a sour taste in their mouth. Um, on top of, on top of like the whole botting stuff, but I'll touch on that in just a second. Um, I really love the concept, but three times a day across five worlds, um, I think that's, it, it, it's going to be clan content is what it's going to be. Uh, Oda Black just announced the new clan, uh, <laughs> prior to this. So he's going to have a lot of fucking content, but it's, it's pretty much just going to be rot and some other PVP clans showing up during those three times a day. Um, and then blowing the fuck out of anyone else who showed up, right? Um, which, you know, whatever. Um, it doesn't really affect me. I hope the rewards stay PvP-focused. I wasn't really paying cl super close attention during that part, but um, as long as the rewards stay PvP-focused and, you know, it's PvP content, I, I, I don't really have a huge opinion on it. I like seeing them have cool, fun stuff. Um, good for them. Uh, the the one other thing that I'll say um, is I see a lot of people talking about it's going to be heavily botted, but I, I, I've said it before. There's like no there's no accounting for bots in the game. POA is heavily botted. Cox is heavily botted. The Inferno has a shit ton of bots. Um, every everything. The Coliseum had uh, an artificial intelligence uh, bot um, <laughs> out like day two, right? It was using machine learning to perfect. Uh, every, everything's botted. Um, I know people like rag on the PK community. It's like, oh, all PK content is botted to shit. Like the entire game is botted to shit. Okay, relax, pipe down. That being said, uh, because of the the negative, the negative uh, like connotation around PKers, I do worry that this is going to get voted into oblivion for them. I hope it doesn't. I'm voting yes, um, but I you know. Time will tell. Leagues five, uh, no surprises. Probably will play it. It's announced every two years. Neat. Uh, game jam. I fucking love this shit, man. Quality of life is so goddamn important to the game. I um, I, I love it. I, I don't, I don't. Is there anything else I need to say? Mini menu was much needed. Super nice to have that kind of stuff. I hope it's really easy to use and it's not going to be too. Uh, I, I can already see myself like right clicking, hovering over the the mini menu and then mousing off on accident and having to redo it again. But we'll see. Um, 
it's still a much needed change. Uh, no more bank fillers because of the new deposit shit. Fucking awesome. POH is whatever. I'm not really a fashionista. I don't really give a shit what my stuff looks like. But every MMO needs that personality stuff, and I love to see it. And then collection log high scores and the new collection log stuff. Like, come on. That's that's amazing. You guys know it. Um, everyone likes completionist content on, in some capacity or another. Um, rest in peace to the call log plugin <laughs> and their website for the high scores. But uh, ideally, that's how the game grows, right? We see really cool plugin ideas and really cool integrations, and we bring it into the actual game. Cool. Bob's your uncle. Off we go. Giant bosses? Um, sure. I... I don't know. It, it felt like an afterthought when they mentioned it on the stream. Like I had muted, um, muted the stream briefly to talk about Rathma with my wife while we were sitting there, and then I unmuted it and they like briefly mentioned giant bosses and we're done. Um, but I mean, it just says new bosses with new rewards. It was left kind of vague from what I can understand. Um, not a lot to go on, but sure, why not? Everyone likes new bosses. Um, Varlamore Thrice, new areas, sure. New Slayer Dungeon, why not? More quests. Uh, the fletching activity. <laughs> um, <laughs> my gut reaction was, why? Who the fuck asked for this? Um, then I, 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 I got to thinking, and I'm like, dude, you know, as they kind of said in the stream, fletching is one of those things where it's like most people's first 99 because you buy it, it's zero time, and you just fucking, <clears throat> you click and you're there. Um, which is... I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm never going to go back and make another account probably, but like if I could go back and do it again, it would be nice to have a little bit of variety with fletch fletching. Cause all I did was I AFK'd and leached in next masses and made like 500,000 amethyst arrows. Well, <laughs> while I leached the drops at next mass, uh, simpler times, man. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, it's good to see another skill getting love. Hunter got some love. Agility is getting a new low intensity love. Why not fletching? Cool. Okay, here's the big one. Um, I said it in my Tuesday video. Middle Age Maxing is my main series. Go check it out. Mwah. Love you. Um, I said it in my Tuesday video. Uh, uh, my wish list was either like a new high end boss or raids four. And we didn't get raids four, which is fine, whatever. They talk about an enrage boss. And I like the concept, I love it. I'm not an RS3 guy. Obviously, if you watch No Monkey, he fucking talks about it very often. Um, about a boss where you kill it once and it gives you your loot and you can either leave or you can throw the loot back, double down and say, fuck you, let's go again. And then it gets harder and harder every time you do that. And you can do that as many times as you damn well please. Um, I think the concept is really cool. I like to see it in OSRS. Um, I really hope they don't fuck it up. And here's my concerns. Ready? Um, I bitch and moan all the time about chip damage. And I can't imagine them doing something like this where they continue to wor use the word infinitely or ad infinitum um, and then put chip damage in because that would, you know, obviously make it not infinite. The chip damage will wear you down over time eventually. Um, but I really hope there's like no chip damage. I really hope it's something like Fasani's where it's like you you can do it perfectly and damageless, right? Anyone who's seen Fasani's done by someone who's better than me uh, knows that you can do that shit without, without any damage, right? That's the beauty of that boss. It's eight minutes long. It's super annoying to some people, but at the end of the day, it's a fucking skill issue if you got hit because it is a purely damageless boss. Really hope we're seeing something like that for the Enraged boss. Um, Going off of that, I really hope there's lots of room for skill expression. I've talked about this previously as well. If you watch, who is he? I have him pulled up here. Smork3000, bless you, you absolute fucking animal. Um, if you go watch his world record speedrun for Fasani's Nightmare, which was done in six minutes and six seconds, the animal has two Sanfu serums and a divine super combat. And that's it. He doesn't have any fucking food. Everything else is runes or different weapons for different tech. Like, the amount of depth, the, sh the shit that you can come up with at Fasani's to, like, wear down the time is ridiculous, you know? The, his entire inventory is just, like, items he probably uses once, right? Like, there's a Torba switch there once for... I, I'm not even sure what. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't even fucking know what he's doing it for. But there's a Dragon Halbeard there. Uh, to save a tick, there's a fucking... Uh, 
a Blood Fury if he needs it. There's Void Waker there for the special attacks. There's a Ham Joint, which is part of the tech with Fasani's. But like, it's his inventory isn't food. His inventory is shit to like do tech and interesting, neat things. You know, it's that's the kind of shit I want to see from this boss. I, I'd want to see like zero chip damage and just like I want people brainstorming on ways to speed this up or make it more efficient. Um, you know, going far into the future. That would be, that would make my heart really happy. Um, now, this is something I've heard from guys who play RS3. Again, I don't, but apparently that boss that no monkey talks about all the time with the, the enrage mechanic, um, apparently a big part of that is DPS checks. Or maybe not DPS checks, but like to push further, you need higher DPS or you need... Um, you know, you, you need like, because it's got a skill rotation, RS3 has a rotation bar like World of Warcraft, you need to like, be able to push your DPS higher by doing your rotation perfectly or whatnot. In RuneScape, you obviously don't have that. You have like tick loss, like you lose a tick and your DPS technically goes down, but there is a max DPS that you cap out at, um, which I guess is kind of similar in RS3, I imagine. Um, but like, there's no, there's no real pushing your DPS higher. It's going to come largely down to the boss speeding up those windows for prayer switches and moving your character to different tiles, um, getting shorter and shorter. And then in my mind, and I hope I'm proven wrong, but in my mind, then that means there's, I mean, they're not going to make damage unavoidable. They might make it to like, you have one tick to react kind of like, uh, Leviathan's and rage. You know, you look at like Port Kazar doing the Leviathan with 27 awakeners orbs in inventory. You, that shit's amazing, right? You can, uh, I, I want that kind of like expression, but then that means, I mean, I mean that, that that means that eventually we're gonna see a Port Kazard video where he does it for six hours and gets nerd logged um, by doing <laughs> by doing this new boss perfectly, which is, I think, cool. But when you involve shit like loot, um, you know, can he? Should he be able to continue doubling down his loot all the way for six hours until? Presumably he's cashing out with like 150 mil. Um, I don't know. I think maybe yes, but like uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how they navigate the loot and how they navigate um, the skill expression with OSRS, given that it's less involved with the damage and more involved with the uh, with the being tick perfect. And uh, yeah, um, ideally, I, I mean, I, ideally for the average Joe, you know, the the port Cazards of the world aside. Um, this is going to be one of those bosses where it's like real easy for the first three enrages and there's that methodical ramp up um, and it slowly gets to the point where you play perfect. Great. Good job, bucko. Um, but if you wake, if you make one mistake, uh, cool. Fuck you. Try again. You know, and I hope I really hope that it's like that for Sonic's Nightmare speedrun where it's you don't you don't bring food in because you're there to play perfectly and that's what you're going to do. You know, um, nothing to say on sailing meme skill. Still in progress, cool beans, whatever. Uh, nothing to say about the HD or API changes, except for this motherfucker has the eyes of a back-end developer carrying his entire team on his back. And uh, this guy warmed my heart, seeing someone so passionate about like the important structural work in a game, as opposed to, wouldn't it be cool if we added some funny hats or a goofy new animal? Um, props to these mods who do back-end shit. You're probably way underpaid and way underappreciated, but just know that I love you. I see what you do. All right, this is where we ruffle some feathers. This seems to be the big ticket item that everyone is flinging shit over. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone before they scroll down to the comments um, that they should fling as much shit as possible down there, okay? Civility and empathy be damned. This is old school RuneScape. Let's have some old school discourse. Uh, no, but for real, this is a touchy subject, so I'm just going to go in dry and hope for the best. Ready? Here we go. Uh, my gut reaction is this is a cheap cash grab and probably a bad idea. I'll list out some of the discord that I hear, or I'll list out some of the discourse that I hear. Um, I've heard surrounding this and try to take a moderately neutral approach to it and uh, just give some, some genuine uh, reactions to it. Ready? Here we go. This will split the player base. It tends to be the, the kind of midwit. <laughs> <laughs> the midwood opinion that, that pops up everywhere, and I don't think it's completely unfounded, but um, I also don't think it's entirely true either. Um, custom maps work well for already creative games like Roblox, right? Where building the shit is the whole fucking point. Um, 
or like Fortnite, you know, you kind of see that with a bunch of custom maps. Um, but at least for right now, the the ideas pitched in their shtick, besides the 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 PvP one, the Purge Knight, was restrictions that people already do. Um, fashionscape, area restricted accounts, um, that kind of stuff. Why why do you need a whole private server to do this stuff? Um, it's like if they're already like individual restrictions that you're doing, like great, um, you can do that in the main game. You know, it's it's similar to Iron Man, right? Bodhi did that by himself, and then they added a, an actual game mode so that people could have the the symbol next to the name, the restrictions. But like nothing was preventing people from doing that before. Um, now you just get a custom name next to you. Um, the only other thing that I can really think of. Um, is like maybe more customizable shit like as the as they continue to roll out more tools and you know they showed like incredible damage increases or xp increases and stuff like that the more they roll that shit out um the more they'll you know make goofy and fun kind of goof off servers but like i don't think the people that would be participating in these private servers or these goofy fuck around servers um are the kinds of people participating in the main game anyways you know like these are the kinds of people who are bank standing or fucking off or like, like I'm just going to throw names out there, uh, like Jimmy and Hanani, right? Phenomenal content creators. God bless them both. Um, but they don't actually play the fucking game, right? Like, <laughs> their, their entire content, aside from the the, the quest series, um, is just fucking around with the community and talking to people is all it is. You know what I mean? And arguably that is part of the game. Um, but like, we're not... Like, by having these creative servers, it's not like anything's really being lost. And I know that comes off super fucking rude, but, like, it's not like it's not like you're you know, suddenly you're not going to find anyone to raid with because the people who want to sit and raid aren't going to be fucking off to these servers. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope that didn't come off too mean. I wasn't trying to be mean, but, yeah, I, I mean, we're not really splitting the player base in two if these people, if these people aren't really playing the game to begin with, right? Um... For the ideas for like for like PvP servers, I I struggle to I struggle to see it being super popular, right? Um, uh, for those of you curious, there is a dedicated Dead Man server, and um, there's 90 people on it right now. You know, it's not like it's not like having these up year round are going to make them interesting you know um there's a quote that i think of all the time which is an abundance of resources makes novelty desirable and when you have a server that lasts the entire year it's not novel anymore that's why leagues are so fucking popular is you get them every two years you know they're kept kind of short and they're super the these the short bursts of wow this is really neat really fun this is a way to mix it up um when you have all these resources and all these different servers, you know, you're going to find really novel stuff, but then because it is around for you to use whenever you want, it's no longer going to become novel. And we're just going to keep making new shit, which good or bad, right? Whatever people create, keep making these new servers, which good or bad, whatever. But I don't, I, I think, I think people are like envisioning this dystopia where, where someone's going to make a new private server and the, the, the community is all going to flock to that. And the main game is going to go down to like 2000 people and it's completely overshadowed. And I just think that's ridiculous. It's probably not going to happen. Um, I think that's a hell of a stretch. Like you look at games like Roblox or Fortnite, there's groups of individuals creating private servers as a team and monetizing them and growing its community, but it's never ever to the degree where it overshadows everything else. Um, people play RuneScape to play RuneScape, and I really want to believe that a super popular private server isn't going to become mainstream. I think it's going to be a bunch of small servers continuing to pop up, eating one another, and dying down over and over and over again. That being said, <laughs> that leads me to the second point, which I'm hearing all the time, is this update is literally just for content creators. Um, and there's two main arguments that I hear about this. And one is that content creators are going to have their own like private server, the goof off server, fun hangout. This is where we'll do events and fun shit. Um, it'll become like the new clan hall. I again find this kind of hard to believe because like 90% of these events are already done in RuneScape. And it's like maybe I'm not having the foresight and the, the vision that some of these people do. But um, I, I think like I, I think it'll be like I'll create some new fun things. And we'll do it one weekend and then it'll die down. It's just going to be a new medium for content creators to create content for, through, which 
good, bad, whatever. Again, not taking not taking a hard stance on whether that's good or bad. Just I think that's probably what this is largely going to be used for. Um, and number two, and kind of in a similar vein there, um, I don't think the average Joe is ever going to make or really, really strongly use one of these servers. You know, the people reason or the reason people watch shit like Swampletics or Extreme One Chunk Iron Man or one HP accounts or Remnick only or whatever other ridiculous permutation you want to have is not because people want to do this shit themselves. Like they even made a jab about it, right? Like no one wants to play settled. <laughs> okay, I won't say no one, but no one wants to play settled one HP, you die and your account's deleted, okay? Like that shit is way too fucking stupid, <laughs> respectfully. Uh, I and most normal people are not going to be doing that. Um, so why on earth would you not only participate in a server like that, um, but two, um, like, w w why would you pay for it? You know, like when you can just have a plugin that's made and put up on the server or put up on RuneLight for free to help you with those restrictions. You know, you don't need to pay for a fucking server that has these restrictions hard coded in there when you can just do a plugin that like guides you. You know, I think of like Trader Joe, right? He can walk into those other chunks anytime he goddamn pleases. He just has a really easy fucking RuneLight plugin where he can click to turn the 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 chunk not sepia or grayscale anymore um you know the mauritania locked he he could have left anytime he wanted he, he made those restrictions for himself and so like why pay for a server um that have the restrictions when you can just do it yourself because it's going to be such niche cases where people actually want to do these restrictions and i want to drive on the point that because i just touched on it lightly previously but like these servers are going to cost money, either in the form of increased membership prices, which I certainly hope is not the case, or through monthly renting of these individual servers. Like this is not an addition out of the goodness of their hearts. Okay, this is this is going to be monetized in one capacity or another, um, and so I think we're very frequently, kind of like I said before, going to see servers pop up, and it's going to be cool and novel for like a half second, and then people are going to be like, "I'm not paying for a fucking server that two people are playing on," and then drop that shit. Um, which again leads me to believe that it's only going, this is an update for content creators by content creators. Editor's note, real quick aside here, um, two things. One, I want to make it like abundantly clear that of course, opinions are all subject to change. Uh, I called it shit flinging earlier, but it's more aptly put as a discourse. Uh, the point of discourse is to discuss things, um, talk and ideally grow as people, right? We're all passionate about this game to one extent or another. Um, so keep that in mind when, quote, you go shit funny in the comments below. But secondly, and I, you know, realizing this as I listen to myself back, um, I want to make it like abundantly clear that I'm not upset that Jagex is like cash grabbing with these servers, right? Or, you know, I labeled it as a cheap cash grab. And I do believe that to be the case, but like, I'm not upset with it. Um, MMOs are in such a weird spot right now, and I worry that they'll be in a weird spot until the end of time because it's just not a game that people like to play anymore. You know, you don't really see the the monetization structure of a monthly fee in the capacity that we that we saw when we were younger. You know, um, it's usually like battle passes or microtransactions, and you, I, I imagine you all agree, I don't want to fucking squeal a fortune in the game. I don't want loot boxes. I don't want a battle pass. I don't want um, <laughs> any of that shit. I'm happy to keep paying my eight bucks a month or whatever it is now. And so when this these new monetization things are brought up like custom servers, I, honestly, hey, more power to you guys. If, you gotta, if you're going to try something out of the box, then fucking go for it out of the box. I just wanted to make it clear as this is being discussed. Um... You know, I call it a cheap cash grab, kind of as a ribbing, kind of not. But they got to monetize some way. Um, and they just got recently purchased or whatever. But just thought I'd throw that in there, listening to myself back. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Please continue. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, this is this is another thing that's important, I think, deserves discussing. I, I saw a comment that made me giggle and it was, I'm going to make a server that's even more woke and even more LGBTQ friendly and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Which, you know, of course sparked some discussion where I saw it posted and of course made me giggle because I don't need to explain to you all that for every action there's an equal but opposite reaction. 
And do y'all remember when we were playing Minecraft as kiddos back in like the alpha <laughs> alpha days and we joined that one server and there was a big fat obsidian slash bedrock swastika in the middle of the map. You know, you remember that shit? Um, <laughs> I imagine that while it's not going to be a huge issue, there's going to be private servers that pop up that have some questionable individuals making some questionable design choices. And so I got to wonder how are all these servers going to be moderated? You know, they're paying for the server, let them do what they want, right? Or I don't like what they have on their server. And even though I'm not playing on this server, I demand you take it down. You type a funny number slash word too many times and maybe your server gets flagged and eventually pruned. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not Jagex, but my words, we're going to be hearing about a RuneScape server that violated TOS because of uh, too many white pointy hats or six letter words or funny drawings shortly after this goes, goes live. That's my prediction. I promise you it will happen in some capacity or another. And again, I don't think it's going to be a common occurrence, but it is another thing to throw on their plate there. You know, the more freedom you give people, uh, the more free shit people are going to do. And on that note, it also makes me think that like Inferno Coliseum and boss simulators all going out the fucking window. I am certain that um, within like no time at all, a dedicated practice server is going to show up, um, which great, you know, um, but that branches into the these could train bots, you know, we're, we're using these servers to train bots. We now don't, you now don't need to like, like with artificial intelligence stuff, you know, you don't need to train them on some private server or some private data. You have the data set of the actual fucking um, assets in RuneScape to train them on, you know, um, will this make bots stronger, better, faster, harder, whatever. Um, and on a side note, Honestly, I really would love to see an Inferno bot try and get like a sub 30 minute world record by just being tick perfect, not taking any damage, running in there, uh, doing everything perfectly on a private server, of course. Um, but that's just me. Someone make it happen, please and thank you. Anywho, <laughs> all that being said, uh, all those points are just things that I hear and wanted to extrapolate on. I don't, I, I don't really give a shit. The only thing that bums me out a little bit is this is, of course, uh, development time, you know, uh, development time and effort is zero sum, right? Um, even though they have a dedicated team, like they said, those individuals are still talented and could be working on other content um, and for something so divisive. It's, you know, it's it's taking resources away from some other potential, you know, opportunity cost. Um, but regardless of the reaction of the community, this is I don't see Jagex trashing this idea at all. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Hope uh, no one was too offended. Not trying to hurt feelings. Um, love you all. Bye-bye. Oh, and the, the final red token for the, the hidden Varlamore shit, it's related to grapes. Convinced. They made too many fucking grape jokes at the start of that damn stream for it to not be relevant. All right, bye-bye.